Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew, and this presentation will go over the FAST system, including how to log in, review projects, and fill out the review form. Um, again, I'd like to thank you all for volunteering your time to be one of our reviewers this year. FAST is hosted on the State Water Board's website, and all concept proposals were submitted electronically using FAST, and you'll be able to access FAST 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, just a few notes about the technical requirements of FAST. FAST was designed and tested for use on PCs using Internet Explorer. Um, using a Mac or browsers other than Internet Explorer may impact your ability to successfully save or navigate through FAST or submit your review. And just note that our ability to troubleshoot any issues for users with Macs may be limited. Um, additionally, we recommend disabling any pop-up blocking software while using FAST. Also, be sure to save your work often as the system will time out after 90 minutes. Um, after any unsaved uh, activity and anything you've done since the last time you saved could possibly will, will be lost. So this is what the FAST homepage looks like. On the left hand side of the homepage there's a variety of resources to help you including frequently asked questions, how-to videos, and the FAST user manual. If you have any questions or need further assistance, you can contact the FAST Help Desk, and the contact information is there at the bottom of the page. Uh, the Help Desk is staffed Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So at the top of the page is where you're going to enter your username and password. If you are a returning FAST user, um, you can use your existing username. Uh, we will provide your username for you if you have forgotten it. However, if you no longer have or remember your password, um, you're going to need to contact FAST at the help desk to help resetting that. And if you're new to FAST, we will provide you with a temporary password. After logging in, you'll be taken to the main menu. Main, main menu, excuse me. You'll need to select View Review Assignments in order to look up the concept proposals that have been assigned to you. And then it will take you to a screen where you can search for your assignments. Um, in the Review for Proposal dropdown, you can go ahead and select the 2021 Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And as this is the concept proposal phase, you can select Phase 1 in the Proposal Phase dropdown menu. After searching for your assignments, you'll see a list below of your assigned concept proposals, and you can go ahead and click on the review title link to bring up the proposal you want to work on. This will open up the proposal, and at the top of the screen, you'll see that it's organized into a number of tabs, and the first tab that FAST will open up is the application tab. Each application is made up of three sections. The first section is the application overview. This section contains uh, submitter and applicant information, the project title and description, the project manager, the director, and so on. The next section is the questionnaire. So this is the part of the application where you will be critically reviewing information such as the funding category, project goals, project beneficiaries, project duration, etc. Be sure to read these carefully and remember you're reading to determine two things. Is this proposal, proposed project a priority for the specialty crop industry? And what is this project's likelihood for success? Um, just a note about reading the replies, if any of the applicants have included links, uh, please don't open them. Applicants were instructed to not include them as a means to circumvent the character limits. The third section is the Attachments tab. 
This is where you can download and review the outcome measures and the budget. These should be the only attachments and should be labeled as outcome measures and concept proposal budget. If there are any other attachments, such as resumes, letters of recommendation, or other information, please don't open them or consider them uh, in your review. Applicants were instructed to not provide any other attachments in order to sustain the competitiveness of the grant process and ensure no applicant has an advantage over any other. Any attachments other than the concept proposal budget or outcome measures should be disregarded. So this is what the outcome measures template looks like. Outcome measures describe the data applicants collect to help them assess the success of their project. Applicants must have chosen at least one outcome measure and a related indicator, as well as one sub-indicator if needed. Applicants must provide values that are whole numbers for the indicators and sub-indicators they select and not percentages, decimals, or fractions. It's important to keep in mind that all selected outcome measures must be achievable during the grant duration. In data collection methods, applicants should describe how the project will collect the data that will be used to measure and track the progress of the indicator and sub-indicator. Keep in mind that the data collection referred here is to track progress towards achieving the indicators and sub-indicators, not how data will be collected for the project. Each outcome measure must have unique responses to the values and descriptions. Entries such as same as above are not com considered complete answers. And just to note that all marketing and promotion projects, as well as all proposals submitted to the Grown in California funding category, must select outcome one, enhancing the competitiveness of specialty crops through increased sales. So this is what the budget template looks like. Uh, please use your experience and knowledge to decide if the applicant gave enough information to make a determination as to reasonableness and measurable benefits in relation to each dollar spent. The amount of funds requested column is where the applicants will enter their total amount of funds requested for each category, rounded to the nearest whole dollar. Uh, the description of costs and activities column is where the applicants will list the costs or activities covered. A description is required for each budget category in which funds are requested, except for categories H and I. And lastly, you can see if the project will generate any income as a result of the project award, which will have to be reinvested back into the project. The review sheet tab features the scoring criteria for the 2021 specialty crop block grant program. Um, in other words, this is probably where you're going to spend the bulk of your time reviewing the application. It's important to note that for security purposes, FAST times out after 90 minutes. Um, at the bottom of the tab, there'll be a save as work in progress button. So I would recommend saving your work often as each time you hit that button, it's going to reset that 90 minute clock. Please also note the application QA button. Uh, this will bring up the information in the application tab into a new window, so you can easily refer back and forth between the application and the review questions. Uh, please note that on the review sheet, you'll find three different question types, the drop-down menus, numerical answer fields, and text boxes. Uh, the sole non-numerical question, question three, regarding prior year SCBGP projects is an unscored question. All other questions are numerical questions where you will rate a project on a scale of one to five or one to 10, with the lowest number classifying a response as poor, and the highest number as excellent. The scores you give for the responses will be tabulated into the overall score for the project, the highest score possible being 50 out of 50. 
Each scored question has guidance provided for you so that you can critically analyze the response given. However, all responses should be analyzed based on the following. Is the proposed project a priority for the specialty crop industry? And what is the concept proposal's likelihood for success? All questions must have responses to them, otherwise your feedback will not be accepted and will be returned to you for completion before the deadline. Um, at the end of the review sheet, there is a text box where you can give any final feedback to the applicant. Uh, the feedback should be provided in complete sentences and should be specific, actionable, and support your numerical score. Uh, your comments will be used by applicants who are invited back to the grant proposal phase to refine and build on their answers. And it helps those who are not invited back to improve the quality of their proposals for the next funding cycle. Uh, please note that you must provide comments for each proposal. Proposals submitted without feedback may be returned to the reviewer for completion. And lastly, be sure that you enter your comments in the text box provided on the review sheet tab and not in the notes tab. Uh, the reviewer notes tab is a different tab used by uh, CDFA staff. Uh, below the text box, you're going to find the total numeric numerical score, which is the sum of all the scores given in the responses above. And finally, below the feedback and overall comments text box, you'll find two buttons, the save as work in progress button I mentioned earlier, that's going to reset that 90 minute timer and save all your work, as well as the review complete button, which will let you submit your review once it's complete. And that's the end of the FAST tutorial. Um, here again is that contact information.